Hi, this is Russ Anderson with a tutorial on the Lens Preset Generation System in Synthize. What we've done is shoot a brief shot of a lens distortion grid which is available from our website. And as you can see we've purposefully introduced a little motion into the shot which gives us more data. This particular camera is a GoPro HD system which has quite a bit of fisheye distortion as you can see. Most cameras aren't going to be quite this severe. So we're going to start the processing of this image sequence as follows. We're going to create a grid of trackers on all of those little dots. And after you do that, you want to take, around, take a little look around and see if there are any extras and track them throughout the shot. So this is a completely normal synthesized tracking at this point in time. So once that's completed, I'm going to do a Control or Command A to select all the trackers and hit the plus key to lock all the trackers back up, which just makes it a little easier to see what we've got. At this point, again, you want to take a look and make sure that you've got trackers on you know, reasonable things throughout here. Sometimes you pick up a little edge, you know, things off the edge of the image and so on. And once you've got this grid set up, you're ready to go on to the analysis phase. And that's out here, process lens grid. And you have a bunch of questions to answer here. So we're going to start out showing the creation of a preset for the two-pass workflow where normally you would use this workflow to deliver distorted images as the final product at the end of the process. And in this workflow you actually distort CGI frames back to match the original footage. Makes uh, for a little uh, more informative view of what's going on. So we're going to start out with this. We have a choice of kind of the simpler fitting using just quadratic and cubic distortion coefficients or there's actually a much higher order fit that you can do. So we'll go with that. And you have another choice that asks the question, you know, do we want to calculate where the center of the lens is? And this calculation only makes sense when you've got a distorted lens like this. And lenses with very little distortion, you can't really do this accurately, and you'll need to turn it off. Now, here we're generating a preset, so we have to store that away, and it's going to go away in a little file sitting out in our scripting area in a folder called LensGrid here. So I'm going to do that and then fire up the analysis. And this could take a little bit of time depending on what sort of machine you have. It's, it's really doing quite a bit of work to straighten this all out as much as possible. So now it's completed this process. You can see there's a residual of about six tenths of a horizontal pixel that represents kind of the remaining amount that we haven't been able to straighten it out. We've computed where the center of the distortion is, where the optic axis is on the image. Those are the numbers here. And now we've got a much larger image size, which is what's necessary to be able to cover the entire input frame. And if you think about this process, basically you're looking off to the side with the fisheye lens, you're looking off to the sides at a very sharp angle. And consequently, the image plane has to get very large to encompass all those sharp angles. So you wind up with that kind of pattern that you see here. Now if you look, you'll see that you've got the grid structure now has nicely been straightened out. You'll see that as I scrub through it, everything stays lined up. Though you see a bit of the motion of the tracker still, and that represents the, the wiggle of the camera as it was moving around. So that's our first uh, approach to this with a two-pass workflow. So let's just undo that. Now go back and do just a single-pass workflow, which is actually a bit more typical and, and easier to work with. So we'll stick with the uh, same other questions.
and rerun our analysis. Now you see it's produced an image frame that's the same size as the original, but it's been basically blown up enough so that there's an image for, for every pixel in the output image. So we're, we've got something that we can use directly as a final product if we like, and we've removed all the distortion from it. The side effect is that we've had to you know, blow up the pixels a little bit to do that, and the amount that we have to do that is actually dependent on that optic center position. The closer that optic center position is towards the center, the uh, less blow up is, is required. So let's take a look at what happens with this preset, what's going on behind the scenes. First off, you know, we've, we've made up this little file that's sitting out there. It's a preset, and it's sitting here in this drop down on the image preparation dialog. And it has in it a very detailed description of what this distortion is. So the distortion coefficients here for the quadratic and cubic distortion are sitting at zero and all the loads being carried by this uh, pre-stored distortion curve. So if we had answered no to the preset question, and then we would have had distortion and cubic distortion values calculated and supplied here and we wouldn't need a distortion at all. The other numbers that have been set up are these cropping numbers, which are used to change the center point of the image to force the distortion to occur around the true optic center. And depending on the situation, we may have a little zoom as well, and that's the blow up that's necessary to cover all of the pixels in the output image with, with some actual image pixels. So I hope you see that this is a pretty quick and easy way to get a very good result to remove lens distortion from a camera. Now it is dependent on the particular zoom setting of the camera. If you change the zoom, you need to have a different set of calibration data for those different settings. So we're recommending that what you do is shoot a little piece of calibration footage for each different shot that you do, each different zoom setting that you do, so that you have those available in post-production. So I encourage you to go take a look at the manual, read through that. There's a whole more description of what the choices are and what things to look for to make sure that everything goes smoothly in that manual. Thanks a lot.